Kathleen Kuhlman, one day I was listening to one of her, her CDs, and she was walking with that long flowing gown, and she put her hands together, and she looked up into heaven, and she kept on, don't grieve the Holy Spirit. And she started to weep. And then she turned around, she said, you people have grieved the Holy Spirit. And so there was spin drop silence. We can only hear her sobbing. And then she told the crowd over a jam-packed auditorium, it is because you have your eyes on me and not on the Holy Spirit. My brother, my sister, until and unless we take our eyes of Billy Graham, of Benny Hinn, and Reynard Bonke, and all the so-called uh, men of God. Praise God for all of them. Take your eyes off them. Place your eyes on the Spirit of the living God. And you call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. With the help of the Holy Spirit, 100% miracles will happen. Amen. Amen. We have to depend on the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God also reveals. Not only does He aid us in our intercession, but He reveals, reveals things that has been concealed even for centuries. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10. Uh, God revealed them unto us by His Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, even the deep things. Let me read that verse of scripture once again. But God had revealed them unto us. Turn to your neighbor and say, that's you. He reveals it to you. He reveals it unto us by his spirit. Because the spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. What is it that the writer is trying to communicate? What is it that Paul is trying to say over here? You must always interpret scripture with another scripture to get the actual meaning out. So if you read that verse of scripture not knowing what that scripture means, that will only create confusion. So let's go to chapter 64 of Isaiah. Okay, let me read verse 4. From since the beginning of the world. Look at that word over there. It means right from the, even before creation. Since the beginning of the world, Men have not heard, nor as it perceived by the ear, neither at the eyes of seen, O God, besides thee, what he had prepared for them that waited for. My brother, my sister, it was like a seal being put over the mysteries of God. It was not revealed to anyone. Not even as men heard it or perceived it in their hearts, the things that God had in store for them that wait for him and love him. Now Paul, the writer over here, says in verse 10, But God had revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searched all things, yea, the deep things of God. What is Paul trying to say over here? Look at the previous verse, verse 9. For it is written, I had not seen, ear had not heard, nor has it even entered the heart of man for the things that God had prepared for them that love him. So Paul is quoting Isaiah chapter 64, verse 4. But what Paul says in the next verse, it says, But God had revealed them unto us by his Spirit. What was concealed? What was a secret? What was not revealed? Can you imagine the Old Testament saints yearning to see the things that God has in store for them, but were not able to see it? It was, it was concealed from the beginning of the world. But we thank God today that the church has the privilege to have a revelation of what has been concealed to be revealed to you today. Amen. Amen. Now, this is not some story over here. This is true. And God wants to reveal. And my brother, my sister, you can have a lot of things revealed to you. Okay. Go to chapter 14 of the book of John, verse 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. How many of you believe? Not sent, he sent. 
This was talking about future tense. When Jesus Christ was talking to his, to his disciples, he says, the Father will send. That means it had not yet happened. It happened on the day of Pentecost. But for you and for me, we are not saying the Father is going to send. The Father has sent. So let me change the tense over here. But the Comforter, who is the Holy Spirit, which the Father has sent in my name, he shall what? Teach. My brother, my sister, Pastor George is not your teacher. The Holy Ghost is your teacher. Can you say amen? Let every man be a liar, but let God be true. Amen? Now, I'm not saying I'm a liar. The Bible says, trust the prophets and the words of the prophets and you shall prosper. Believe the man that preaches the word the way it has to be preached. Amen? Today we have a lot of fake, you know, flaky stuff have been. A lot of wrong teaching, wrong doctrines. My brother, my sister, somebody once said, um, life can go halfway around the world before truth has put on his boots. Amen? So that's what's happening. So this verse of scripture, let me read it again. The, who will teach you all things, not some things, not few things, not some of the things, but all things. All things means? That's right, all things. All things, and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. To me and to you, this is not a mystery book. It's a book of revelations. Amen? Mystery, no more concealed. Mystery revealed. He'll teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Whatsoever I have said. Now, you take that word said, whatever I have said, it comes from a, from a Hebrew word called Dawa, which simply means when you read this book, it is a lot of things that has been said. You're reading the sayings of Jesus. But on the other hand, the word Dawa means what is being said is also what is being seen. He's saying it right now. Amen. It's a word that has been said and it is something that he is saying it in the present tense. It's no more in the past tense. Yes, it was in the past tense, but the word of God is also present tense. And it will be future tense as well. Amen. So if God said, you know, through the lips of Isaiah, by his stripes we are healed. It's not just what he said, but it's what he's saying right now. You are healed by his stripes. Whatsoever you lay your hands upon, it shall prosper. It is not what has been said. It is, this is what he's saying to you right now. Whatever you lay your hand upon, it will prosper. Dawar. So the scripture says over here that uh, he will teach you all things. 1 John chapter 2 verse 20. It says, but you receive unction from above. And this unction that you receive from above will teach you all things. Verse 27 says, but the anointing that you received, you need no man teach you. The anointing itself that abided in you, teach it all things. My brother, my sister, we don't go to man for counseling. We go to the Spirit of God for counseling because he is the greater counselor and he's the only counselor that will counsel you the facts. Today, everyone will come and teach their opinion. But not many will teach the word of God. This is what I think you should be doing. This is what you should not do. You know, you should not pray in tongues. And you should not do this. And you should not do that. You know, they are bringing their opinion. And their opinion came from their grandfather. This is what my grandfather said. And his grandfather will say, this is what my grandfather said. So down the generations, their opinion is coming. My brother, my sister, let every man be a liar, but let God be true. Amen. It's not what man says. It's not what anyone says. It's what the word of God has to say. And my brother, my sister, it's what the word of God says is what I like to preach. Chapter 16 of the book of John, once again, 13. How be it? When he, the spirit of truth, is come, he would guide you into all truth. He shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. 
and he will show you things to come. When the spirit of truth is come, how many of you believe he's already here? He's not coming, he's here. He's come. He's in our midst. When the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. He shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he hears. Now, you cannot hear until and unless somebody is speaking. So the Holy Spirit is hearing because somebody is speaking. Whatever he hears. Did you know this morning your name is being mentioned in heaven? Amen. Did you know this morning that the Father and the Son are in a conversation with your name in that conversation? Amen. This is what God is saying. Or this is what he could be saying or would be saying. This is what the Lord is saying. Jesus is talking to the Father. Victor is going to Africa on the 14th. So what do you think Victor should be doing when he goes to Africa? The Father will turn around. Well, Victor is going to meet some of his loved ones, but at the same time, I have a job for Victor. He must go and preach the gospel. Well, Jesus will say, well, if Victor is going, I have a few names that Victor should go and minister and share the gospel with. I mean, what I'm telling you is facts, because when you read in Acts chapter 16, the names are mentioned over there. Don't go to Mysia. Don't go to Bethany. Go to Macedonia. There's a call for Macedonia. Amen. Paul knew it because the Holy Spirit revealed it to him. So now Victor has no clue. He's off to Africa on Saturday. But as he's traveling to Africa, God Almighty and heaven, along with Jesus, are having this conversation. Who's hearing the conversation? Not Victor, the Holy Ghost. Whatever he hears, he's listening. He comes down and he comes to Victor. Victor now is in prayer. The church prayed for him. He comes to Victor. Go and minister to your uncle. Whatever he heard, he revealed it. So Victor goes in his mind. Because the scripture says in Romans chapter 9 and verse 1, he says, my mind, my conscience bears witness with what my heart says. So the Holy Spirit does not whisper into this part of Victor's body, his ear. But Victor has a ear in his spirit. And so in his spirit, because the Holy Spirit bears witness with our spirit, he does not talk to our head. A lot of people are being led because they think the Holy Spirit spoke to the head. No, my brother, my sister, he does not speak to our head. He speaks to our spirits and we are led by our spirits because the Lord talks to our spirit and our spirit leads us and how, do we, how, how are we led? Our conscience tells us what to do. So Victor goes and he is excited. The Lord spoke to him. He goes straight to his uncle and when he goes, what Victor would not have known, the Lord already prepared his heart before Victor went and even shared. And when he went and shared the gospel, his uncle got saved. Yes. I'm just using this as an example. Now, I'm not saying go to your uncle, but if the Lord says go to your uncle, go to your uncle. Amen. So whatever he hears, but my brother, my sister, whatever he hears, he's coming to speak to us, but the problem is we are not hearing what he heard to come and deliver to us. Amen. And the reason why we can't hear because we have been lending our ears to too many other voices. Somebody come to Victor, don't go to Africa, Victor, they're going to cut you off. <laughs> so he listened to that somebody and he never went to Africa. No, my brother, my sister, it's not what somebody said, it's what the Holy Ghost said. Because what he said is what he already heard. My daughter got married on the 21st 
of uh, last month. Will, I think almost two weeks now since the marriage is done. You know, we had such a struggle to find the right person. It took us about one and a half a year to two years for us to pray the right person. But, you know, the youth, they think everyone is the hero. So she was trying to pick maybe this, maybe that. And one day she made a statement, and I pondered on what she said. Somebody asked her, now that somebody came and told me what she told that person. And he asked her, Becky, what's the kind of a husband that you're looking for? She said, the man I marry should be like my father. But in the meantime, she was looking for so many others. So I was wondering, what is the characteristic she found in me that she wanted her husband to have? Now, I'm not saying it because I just want to tell you who I am or what I am. I'm saying in front of my wife. My wife will tell you I'm a calm person. I always been, it's not only because I became a believer, that was my nature basically. I'm very calm, I'm very cool, very hard for me to get angry, very hard for me to have grudge, and I can give you a big list of what the Holy Spirit has been helping me to pattern my life according to. So she's been watching me right from childhood. Did you know she's 29 years old, not even once I put my finger on her. Not once. I chastise her. I punish her. I deny her of certain things, but never raise my hand. I've not done that. Not even to my son. No matter how naughty they could have been in the young age, I, did, I punished them. And not even once I raised a little finger to my wife. My daughter watched this. The one I marry should be like my father. But then we were wondering and then finally my wife and I, we started to pray. And then we started to pray in tongues. Now I pray the Lord as much as I pray for my daughter. There are many daughters and sons over here not married. I pray for everyone the same way I prayed for her. And we do it. So anyway, we've been praying, we've been praying. And we prayed. But we had one fear. I hope she gets the right person. I hope she settles down with the right person. And then, this boy got in touch with my daughter. It's not that she got in touch, he got in touch with her. From another country. And when he came, I was surprised. He's just like me. And then I met his father. I was even more surprised that his father and I had a lot in common. He resigned from a secular place the very same way I resigned. He's in full-time ministry the way I'm in full-time ministry. He's a church planter the way I'm a church planter. His son is He's a son of a pastor, and my daughter is a daughter of a pastor. It clicked, they got married, now she's gone abroad. It's an answer to prayer. So, it may take long, it may seem negative, do not give up. Our God does not sleep, He does not slumber. He knows all our struggles. My brother, my sister, I cannot overemphasize the way the Holy Spirit loves you. He loves you more than you love yourself. He's there to help you. And this morning, as we disperse and as we go back, I want you to grieve not the Spirit of God, but turn to Him and say, I'm sorry if I ignored your presence. I'm sorry if I never acknowledged the things that you want to do in my life and I refuse to have that being operated in my life. From today, it's a new beginning with the Holy Spirit. Amen.
I want you to come next Sunday. We're going to have a lovely time next Sunday. Amen. And while I'm preaching today, I ask the Holy Spirit to help me to preach what you want me to preach. And this is the word of the Holy Spirit. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this wonderful morning, O oh God. Lord, I feel that the atmosphere is beginning to clear up. Lord, I know, Lord, a lot of prayer is about to be answered. Lord, I know, Lord, that there are special gifts being delivered, O oh God. It's on its way, O oh God. Lord, we thank you that you're going to dispense these gifts into our lives, spiritual gifts. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this morning that we are never going to be the same because this day is a day of transformation in our lives. Father, I commit, Lord, thy people into your hands and I ask you, Lord, this morning to cover them with your blood. Father, minister, Lord, to each one of us throughout this week until we come back, Lord, on Sunday, Lord, once again to learn of you, Lord, and to receive, O oh Lord, a fresh touch, a fresh anointing from above, O oh God. Thank you. We give you the praise, the glory, and honor. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide upon each one of us this morning and always. Amen. God bless you. Go in peace.